Hey everyone, let me bend your ear a bit about frequency, wavelength, and amplitude. When we talk about waves, sound, and light waves, we usually break them down into their three components, frequency, wavelength, and amplitude. Frequency is the number of times a complete cycle occurs per second, from the initial start of the sound, let's call that zero degrees, to the first peak, let's call that 90 degrees, back to zero on a downward slope, let's call that 180, to the bottom part of the wave cycle, or its trough, let's call that 270, and then back upward to zero. If the complete cycle occurs 60 times a second, the wave has a frequency of 60 cycles per second. The standard term used to describe frequency, number of cycles per second, is hertz. Therefore, you usually talk about a sound wave that has 60 cycles per second as having a frequency of 60 hertz. Let's take a look at this subwoofer. It's creating a sound of 60 hertz by vibrating and moving the air around it. The loudspeaker cone first moves forward, compressing the air molecules, returning to its starting position, moves backward, rarefying the air molecules, and then back to its initial starting position. While the sounds you hear every day are complex waveforms, each sound can be broken down into its individual sine wave of all the frequencies that make up each particular sound. Wavelength is the physical distance between two points exactly one cycle apart in a waveform. Wavelength measures the distance between the two points that occur at the same place. Parts of the wave above the reference level, or zero, represent the molecules being compressed. We call that compression. Maximum compression occurs at the top of the waveform, or at the wave's peak. Parts below the reference level represent the molecules being rarefied. We call that rarefaction. Maximum rarefaction occurs at the bottom of the waveform, or at the wave's trough. One cycle is completed when the molecules have moved from the rest position, through compression, back to the rest state, then through rarefaction, and finally back to being the same distance from one another as they were at the beginning. Frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. This means that as one gets larger, the other gets smaller. The wavelength of the frequency at 1130 Hz is about one foot long. That makes a lot of sense as sound travels around 1130 feet per second. If I go down one octave, one half of the reference frequency, to 565 hertz, the wavelength doubles to about two feet. If I go up one octave, double that of the reference frequency, to 2260 hertz, the wavelength will be half the size of the reference frequency, or about six inches long. The lowest frequencies have the longest wavelengths, and the highest frequencies have the shortest wavelengths. Let's take a look at a couple of frequency wavelengths. This is a one foot ruler. A 1130 hertz sine wave is about this long from the start of the wave cycle to the completion of the wave cycle. It starts at the beginning of the ruler, crests to its peak about three inches, back to 180 at six inches, cresting through at nine inches, and then back to its initial position of zero at 12 inches. Here are two one foot rulers. This would be the length of about a 560 hertz sine wave. The wave would start at the beginning of the ruler, crest to its peak at six inches, back to the reference line at 12, cresting to its trough at 18, and back to the initial position at zero at 24 inches or two feet. Here is a 40 hertz sine wave. If you're listening to this on a laptop or a mobile device, you might not truly hear what this wave sounds like because the loudspeakers in that device might be too small to reproduce the sound of 40 hertz. A 40 hertz wave is about 28 feet long. It would start here, crest to the top of its peak here, back down to 180 here, crest to the bottom of its trough here, and back up to its original position of zero here. Whew. It's kind of chilly out here. Glad that still works. If you ever wonder why it takes larger speakers to make lower frequencies, this is one of the reasons. 
the loudspeaker needs to move much more air for the lower frequencies than it would for the higher frequencies. Amplitude is the magnitude of the signal. As represented on a sine wave, it is the intensity of the wave. To our human ear holes, this is how loud or how soft the wave is going to sound. The greater the amplitude of the wave, the farther the wave is displaced from the midline and the greater the signal's magnitude. That's great for my ear holes, but how does that affect my eye holes? Light travels as a wave, kind of like sound. It has a wave frequency, those frequencies have wavelengths, and those waves have an amplitude. But instead of lower high pitches, our eye holes interpret those frequencies as colors. Low frequencies are red, mid frequencies are green, higher frequencies are blue. And just with sound, the frequencies have a corresponding wavelength. The waves are just a lot smaller. Red light is somewhere in between 740 to 625 nanometers. That would be 740 to 625 billionth of a meter. Green would be somewhere between 565 and 520 nanometers. And blue would be in the neighborhood of 500 to 430 nanometers. And just like sound, light waves have amplitude. But instead of interpreting it as loud like our ear holes do, our eye holes interpret the amplitude of light as brighter or more saturated color. Okay, so to recap, sound and light travel in waves. Those waves have characteristics of frequency, the number of cycles per second, wavelength, the physical length of those cycles, and amplitude, the intensity of that wave.